lot of questions I get is like, is that even possible, right? Because it seems like science fiction. Professor Jeremy Cho and his team are developing a technology that could, in theory, sustainably source water, not from the surface or below ground, but from here, over there, and up there. There's a lot of water in the atmosphere, um, a, a, an incredible, vast amount of water in the atmosphere. Atmospheric water harvesting is grabbing water vapor from the atmosphere in the air that's around us right now and transforming it into liquid form so that we can use it for any purpose. This technology isn't new. Cho spent some years contributing to other efforts but recognized deficiencies in their collection rate and lackluster performance in low humidity environments. So upon moving to Las Vegas, he began brainstorming. You know, a lot of engineering problems, sometimes the best solutions are hidden in plain sight, right, in nature. We also knew about Australian tree frogs. They seem to hydrate themselves just from the very humid environments that they were in. And we thought, okay, how are they doing that? Well, they have some kind of layer surrounding itself. So it's like a skin for the frog. And what's inside of that membrane is the extracellular matrix, right? Which is which has some salt. And we realized that, okay, if you have a really salty solution, then water vapor will naturally want to go towards that salty solution. That's what we recreated in the lab here. After publishing their paper, Cho said their findings were promising, showing faster collection and high performance even in the arid Mojave. Seeing the potential of his work in real-world applications, Cho co-founded Waiver Technologies with Rich Sloan to explore commercialization and development opportunities. So this is a bench-scale prototype of the atmospheric water harvesting technology. And what you see here in this prototype, air passes through these layers the vapor in the air is captured in the salty solution on the other side of the hydrogel membrane. As the water is gathered together, this vertical structure here is a little distillation chamber, basically where the water is boiled, and the steam that comes off of that is pure water that we condense and can use. So this is a proof of principle that demonstrates how this breakthrough technology can be made into a product prototype. Cho says just 30 feet of air above Clark County contains enough atmospheric water to meet the needs of its people and infrastructure. And Zhuang said water would have a negligible environmental impact. When we go out into commercial environments through Waiver Technologies, the new startup company, we're focused on much larger systems. So we're thinking in terms of a 10 gallon per day system, 100 or 1,000 gallon per day, even jumbo 10,000 gallons per day systems. So a good example, right here at UNLV, they use millions of gallons to irrigate the grounds, the landscaping. And we are already working with the leadership at UNLV to start to replace that Lake Mead sourced water for landscaping. We're working with a Fortune 500 medical therapeutics company that does in-home kidney dialysis, which requires distilled water. We even envision a backpack version of this. So you go out hiking out in Zion or whatever, and you can literally be making water as you hike. Part of the appeal of pulling atmospheric water in Nevada is that the design can be easily solar powered and can generate enough water to meet the state's growing demands. By 2030, the projections are that global demand for fresh water will outstrip supply by 40%. So within the decade ahead, we are gonna be upside down on fresh water and globally, not just in arid regions like this. I am on a serious mission to ensure that we move through the commercialization process as quickly as possible to start to get these products into our communities and to incrementally add 5% more water, add 10% more water. Those are very meaningful contributions that we're totally intent on making. For News 3, I'm Ming Salau.